-hmm. What I said was that the, um, the social dynamics, the, or maybe the social psychodynamics uh, that took extreme form in historical events like the Holocaust, like the pogroms, like the witch hunts, are also operating today. They have not reached that extreme yet, but we cannot pretend that we have outgrown mm. these dynamics uh, because here they are operating. So, um, can you tease out how they're it, operating? It, like in the way in which you see them operating in a succinct way for people to be to be like, okay, I see that, right? Well, the basic pattern is that is that in times of social stress, when divisions and rivalries are on the increase, um, the that the okay, maybe I'll I'll backtrack even a little bit. Um, so Rene Girard, the philosopher, uh, identified the biggest threat to early human culture was reciprocal violence. He called it tit for tat violence, blood feuds that would just get out of control and tear societies apart, even before they really had a chance to get going. And the way that societies dealt with this was that they would focus all of the 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 pain, the revenge, the blood lost, all of that, they would focus on a, on a victim. Everybody would unite in, he called it unifying violence uh, against a victim who would then be killed. And because the, the um, tension was discharged with this act of murder, the problems would go away. The rivalries would subside. It seemed like it worked. Therefore, the logic was if, if killing the victim um, uh, solved the problem, the victim must have been responsible for the problem. And so this becomes mythologized and institutionalized in terms and becomes human sacrifice, which was pervasive um, in, uh, across many, many societies. And, and, and so this basic solution to social tension of find a identifiable subclass that are not fully of society, that will not be avenged, and you um, persecute them, you murder them, you ostracize them, you get rid of them, and then the problem is solved. This pattern is very ancient and um, fascist leaders can hijack that impulse by turning it against whatever victim subclass is convenient for them and they can ride that into power. So one of the um, uh, main characteristics uh, of the uh, sacrificial victim is that they are unclean. They are polluted. They carry an evil spirit. And if you associate with them, then you are at risk of becoming one of the victim subclass as well. So if you're friends with one of the witches, if you've been associating with one of the, the communists or one of the enemies of the people, uh, then you too could be sent to the gulag. You too could be burned at the stake. So you better... Uh, distance yourself from them. Well, this, so so you can see how in the age of COVID, um, I mean, for one thing, with the disease itself, it's, it's all about contagion and contact tracing. And, and if you've been near this person, then you have to quarantine too. But then also on the level of opinions about it, like if you, uh, you can get banished from social media not only by um, saying things that mark you as the um, um, the the dehumanized as part of the dehumanized subclass of anti-vaxxers or even unvaccinated people, uh, but even if you post something and or post a link to a website that espouses those views, 
then also you can get uh, deplatformed. So so it's like it's almost like you know whatever uh, Joe Mercola or Robert F Kennedy or these people like they have cooties, and if you associate with them, it's just like in grade school. Then you get the cooties too, and the the rest of the class won't have anything to do with you. So these, and, and like, yeah, like you can explain all of these things by saying, well, you know, the COVID quarantines and lockdowns, that's not because of mob dynamics. That's because of there's an actual pathogen and the, the censorship and, um, and the deplatforming on the internet. That's not because of mob dynamics. That's because we need to protect people from from disinformation and fake news. And like, you can have all kinds of justifications, but it still fits the pattern, doesn't it? And because it fits that pattern so closely, you have to ask, is there something else going on here besides reason? Mm. <laughs> something, and I, and I think, yeah, especially given the amount of, of emotional passion that, it stirs up like there is something primal at work here mm. and something frightening.